Well, hello there, family. Happy day, great day. God bless you. It is a fantastic day to be here as we are going forward. Today, as we get into what I want to share with you, if if you are coming to this message today, I want to preface this, that if you are seeking to be uplifted in a way that tells you how hot you are, how great you are, how how lipalicious you are, well, you may need to go to Instagram for that particular type of operation. Today, I'm going to be ministering and just imparting to you, those of you who are ready to receive, who are ready to be used mightily by God. So I come to you today with value that will help you produce. So when all things you do, you glorify God. Amen. So those of you that are looking for something else, well, that's a separate thing. As I shared on Saturday with regards to time and being aware of time, it was not about the times. No, not about that, but it was about the time. Okay, there's a difference of times, current times, and time as in 1440 minutes in a day as we look at the time there are some things I want to get into that will expand upon that as you become aware of time and how you move in time Kairos time different than Kronos time which is a time that we're all relegated to in some ways of an eight to five job working for the man working in this time that time so on and so forth. That is one thing. This is being aware now of the time wasters or the time suckers, or as it is written, the foxes on the vine. Now, as you're looking at time and the distractions, you will need to be identifying the distractions or time wasters so that you can enhance and expand and multiply time in time with God in his time. Okay, so in no particular order, I'm going to be sharing with you some things to be investigating in your own life. Now I'm reminded of when Abraham was told not to acclimate to the place that he would be living because if you acclimate, you become like them. Now, how might that re, uh, relate to time? Because if you move to a place and you move in the fullness of that particular time and you become like the people in that time, but it's not time that you should be operating in, then you will miss it. And time moves different in different places, even though time is still time. I'll give you an example. If you live in, let's say, Iowa, it's a little bit different, okay? Time moves at its pace, not saying that the time is bad. However, if you were walking with God in that time and then you move to New York City, well, a New York, they don't call it a New York minute for nothing, right? And they don't call the, the big hair in Dallas for nothing, right? There's a reason. And so when you look at that particular minute, it is still a minute regardless of where, but it will feel and move different. So what does that mean? It means that wherever you are, you want to be praying about moving at God's pace in time where you are and not acclimating to the pace of the lifestyle of the place that you are in. Now, I'm not saying that it's good. I'm not saying that it's bad. What I am saying is that it is with you and the Lord. Okay. So if you get caught up in the time of the earthly system, you may miss what God is trying to show you because it's his time and you would be missing his time to be seeking other time. And I don't think I want to continue to go this way. I'm going to switch up my direction here. So as you are moving in the particular area of time, Lord, help me to 
recognize time where I'm at. That's the first thing. Is my time a distraction? Okay, so time can be a distraction if you are not in it and alert to it, as I shared in, in Saturday's message. Okay, so to give you an example of being alert to time, I moved from one city, Denver, where time moves at its own pace, and a walkable city, it's like a pimple to New York City, no big deal, it's just is what it is, to a car city of Dallas that's 318 square miles to where you have to plan an extra hour anywhere that you go because it's a time suck. If you are not aware, and those of you that live in, in LA or many other places of this, you know what I'm talking about. So you get accustomed to building in that time for what needs to be done. However, there's a way to move through that. And when you are aware of time in that particular element, you can be praying that you're utilizing time in a way for God's benefit. Okay. And, and each city has its own spiritual element to it that impact time. Many people are not even aware of the strongholds or the principalities in their city that will show them or that they won't even be aware of and how to maneuver through time. So we have to be aware of time in where we live. That's the first thing. Okay. So hopefully that, that was something that you can take with you. When I moved to Dallas, I have to say the city is operates extremely different than any city that I've lived in and had to maneuver through and pray for a long time to understand time in this place. And the Lord revealed many things. So with that said, that's one area. The second area with regards to time is in your conversations. Now, the Bible is very clear about the idle chit chat. The Proverbs 31 woman was not anywhere involved in any chit chat. She had too many things to be dealing with than to be dealing with idle chit chat. Her children were up, her servants were up. She was up before the sun. She was getting things done. There was nothing idle about anything in her life. You want to be aware of the idle chit chat because not only does the idle chit chat take time, but it also takes energy. If when you are finished with any conversation, you feel like you need a nap, those are draining spirits. So you have to be aware and alert of what someone is pouring into your life or what they are taking away from it. Okay, so if someone is coming to you and all they're seeking is for you to fill them, you need to be aware of that, that it is not your job to fulfill them and they are energy suckers and they will drain you dry. So you need to be aware of that because it's the time for the conversation. It's the content of the conversation or the subject matter, but then it's also the energy that is required to be in that conversation. Many idle conversation or chit chat produces nothing. It, it produces nothing except everything you really don't want. That will keep you sidetracked from getting done what it is that God would want for you to be getting done. So your conversations, how do you maneuver through this? As it would be with time, Lord, show me my time. Show me how to move through this. Lord, I pray that I am loose from every form of idle chit chat, that my conversations are covered by the blood, that you move me in a way that everything I'm doing pleases you. And I pray that I only interact with those that you need me to interact with today for your glory. Amen and amen. Okay, along those lines. That is an example. Now, as you get away from those things, 
you may find that you have more time in your day. That's exactly the point. More time to be focused on kingdom business. Now, I think I have two more, two more points. My next point here would be the time wasters of the weather. Now, why do I say the weather? What's crazy is this. Many people are distracted by the weather. Not the storms, not, not if there's a hurricane or a tornado. I'm not talking about that. They get distracted by temperatures and things of the such. Well, let me tell you something. It is about 103 out here right now. And the humidity, look, it's Dallas. So you just, it is what it is. It's hot, it's humid, welcome, you sweat. Everybody does. I just praise God, I'm not in Tampa or Houston. So we keep it moving. Now, why is the weather a big deal? The weather's not a big deal. It's our perception of it that is. If you are distracted by the weather, well, then your eyes really aren't on the things of the Lord. Is it hot? Yeah, okay, and? Well, many might say, well, it's too hot for me to do this, this, or this. Now, health-wise, absolutely we may say to someone who has a heart condition don't go outside at two in the afternoon and mow the lawn we might get we understand that that is a spirit of common sense but when we're looking at allowing the weather to dictate what we do or don't do well then now we are under something instead of over it because weather is a mindset or a perception Okay, if it's cold out, great, put a coat on. If it's hot out, take extra water, prepare yourself, okay? So when you start to look at this, the weather is what the weather is, you allowing it to dictate anything to you now means that it is your God or it has control over you. Well, no, I'm with Paul, I'm going to Rome, okay? So that's how that is going to be operational. Is it a distraction? It can be if you allow it to be. But if you have things to do, then you plan around it and everything will get done. Why are we talking about this? Because you need to be prepared in and out of season and be aware of your circumstances and what's happening, knowing that God can get all things done. How do we know this? Well, I'll give you a personal testimony. When the storm hit Texas in February 2021, I prayed, had, there was no power, and I prayed for supernatural heat. I was in a hotel with no power. God provided. God provided so much in a way that it was so hot that Little Miss Olive needed to have the hotel room door open so she could cool down. And the temperature got up to... Eh, you know, almost 80 and, and, and there was no power. Okay. So God will always provide. We just have to be moving in a way to receive that. Praise God that he always makes the way. Now that's the weather. So you pray through that Lord reveal to me what my plans are, what it is that you have for me and he will. All right. Which way do we want to go? Oh, we'll check out this way. Never been this way before. So we'll see what we see. Now, the final thing I want to share with you is in regards to your circumstances. Your circumstances can always be overcome, right? We all have circumstances that we are moving through. And as we move through those circumstances, they can either be a distraction or they can be the victory that we're walking to achieve. So what do I mean by this? Exactly this. Many people get stuck, focused on their circumstances instead of the rewards of the victory of overcoming. It's a waste of time. This is the circumstance. Okay, well, great. Thank you, Lord. I'm an overcomer in Christ Jesus. Thank you, Father, for the rewards of the victory that I hear the sound of victory and that you've already made the way for me to be walking in it. Okay. So as you go forward and recognize these things, what are the things that are distractions in my, in, my, in my life with regards to time? Is time itself 
a distraction, number one. Are my conversations a distraction or are they uplifting? That's number two. Number three, we talked about the weather and overcoming it by our minds that God can do anything through that. We're walking in wisdom to not go drive on ice. Hello, that's just smart. And then to not do so. And then finally would be, would be the circumstances. He will always make the way. This too shall pass. But as you are moving in a direction of being alert, now you are on the offense with your circumstances. Oh, crud. You see it? Ah, I told you they were here. Okay, we're just going to keep it real. <laughs> Lord, thank you that we are... Okay, you just go on over there. All right, well, we're going to keep on moving. I have to go back that way. God is going to make the way. <laughs> oh, hallelujah. See, we're talking about being alert. Yes, hallelujah. The Lord has made the way, and we have to cross back over there. But praise God that the way is being made. We are alert and normally they're not that color so praise god we are alert and so as we are going forward you guys want to go there with me you guys i'm just going to take you with me how about that so we'll just continue forward here as we are moving along nothing no weapon formed against us shall come to pass in the name of yeshua there is not going to be one single thing that is going to come near us we are going to be moving along not one single thing is going to be trampling or coming underfoot near us in the name of Jesus. Shall we just walk on up there or shall we stay over here? We are going, I'd like to just run to be honest with you, but we are going to keep it real. I don't know where exactly it is. Do I like this? Well, however, Lord, I thank you. This should be nothing but a thing. We deal with this all the time, except I didn't like any of it. I've never liked any of it. And praise God that we are staying in our lane. That might be one more point that I'm going to share with you is that as you stay in your lane, they are over there. Yep, they are aware that we are here moving in the power of the Lord. And as we are moving forward, okay, guess what? They are in their lane. What will happen as you stay in your lane, focused on the things of the Lord, is that as you are in that place, nothing else will be able to penetrate, infiltrate, or dominate you. Because you are in that particular place with the Lord. It doesn't matter who's doing what. It doesn't matter who's what doing not. It does not matter because the only thing that will matter is what is happening in your relationship with the Lord. You are all the Lord cares about in your relationship with him. There is no one else that is of interest to him except you. So as you receive that and as you keep moving forward, remove every and any and all distractions. Time yourself when you get on any social media. Be alert, be aware. Before you go into grocery stores, you remain prayed up so that way you are aware of what you're purchasing and why. You are alert to what's around you and why. You are aware of all that is attempting to come around you for any and all purposes and why. And you will find that now you are going in a direction where there will be many that will not be able to go with you. Not because they can't, but because they can't. Why? because they're not choosing to. You cannot carry them. You need to be moving forward in the fullness of where God has for you to get to. Don't feel bad. You just rejoice that every step that you take is anointed unto him and that as you go forward, that you will see his goodness and his graciousness and his mercy and his awesomeness and that it all is for you as you go forward. So I pray that this has blessed you. I pray that this has given you much to take with you today. We can see it here on the sign. 
Oh yeah, they give us all the warning right there. Watch out for it. So there we go. So now as you go forward, guess what? They're gonna be watching out for you as you come because you are bringing the light, you salty ones. Amen. So receive that today. God bless you. If you've still listened to this and you've not hit the button, please do. This is all about training and equipping and moving you from one place, from sitting still in a building to getting out, going out and being and sharing the light and salt in the earth. So God bless you guys till next time. Enjoy your day. And I will be back soon with the next message that he asked for us. God bless you all. Bye-bye.